hello. So today we're going to be talking about a new type of integration method. So, so far we've learned how to different, um, not differentiate, I'm sorry, integrate different functions. So as of right now, you know how to integrate polynomials, anything that looks like x, ax to a power. Um, you also know how to do um, specific trig functions, so something like sine of x, cosine of x, secant squared of x, and so forth. And then you also know how to do functions that, um, specific sort of rational functions, so anything that um, looks like a polynomial over a singular x to a power. So anything like that, you currently know how to integrate. But that's a very small window of amount of functions that you can integrate then. So how would you go about integrating something like x times the sine of x squared plus 1? As of right now, you don't know how to do it because it's not, you have the product of two things going on, then you have something inside of the sine function, and, so, and you can't use the power rule on that. And there is unfortunately no product rule of integration or a quotient rule. So today what we're going to learn about is how to go about integrating something like this. So the way we do that is it's kind of like the chain rule for integration. And it's called, uh, the theorem that talks about this is called the anti-differentiation of a composite function. So how to find the antiderivative of a composite function. So if, if you have g of f and x of f, I'm sorry, g of x and f of x rather, and your integral looks something like this down here, where you have a function g of x inside of another function f of x, and then g prime of x, so the derivative of g prime is somewhere in there too. Then the antiderivative of that is just the antiderivative of f composed with g of x, the original g of x function. And the way we do that is we, we do what's called a u substitution. So you let u be equal to this function g of x. So that way, when you take the derivative of u, so when you take the derivative of u with respect to x, that's just g prime of x. But if we just want to find out what du is, if we find what the, dif the differential of u is, just like we did on that section with differentials, all you do is multiply over that dx to get g prime of x dx, which is what you can see right here. And then we can substitute du in for this part of the function, and we substitute u in for the g of x right here, and we get this final this final um, integral right here, which is defined over one, one variable. So it makes it a lot easier. So I know this seems really complicated right now, and u substitution is a great method for integration. And you're going to end up using it a lot. And the more practice problems you do and the more you just work with the method, the easier it's going to become. And you're going to start seeing the patterns and recognizing when to use a u substitution, when it's appropriate, and what to pick for your u. So the rest of this video is really just going to be um, example problems, and then there's going to be a second video where it's just all all example problems. So just to help you guys get a feel for that pattern recognition and when to use it and how to use it. So the first example we're going to do is that first integral I showed you. So we have x times the sine of x squared plus 1. So with u substitution, what you want to look for is a function that you can pick where at least most of its derivative is included somewhere else in the function. So we know how to integrate the sine of x. So hopefully we're just going to end up with something like the sine of u. So for this, we're going to let our u be equal to x squared plus 1. Now if you're not sure what to let your u be equal to, just pick something, find your du, and then see if you can substitute it and rewrite your integral so that it's much easier for you to integrate. So to find our du, all you do is you take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of u is going to equal to the derivative of the right hand side. So we're going to take the derivative of x squared plus 1. So that's just going to be equal to 2x and then you just throw your dx on. Now, so in other words, we've taken care of this. This is now u. And if you notice, we have an x down here in our du and we have an x up here. So, so far, our integral looks something like this we have x sine of u 
dx. Now what we want to do is we want to replace this x dx so that they're in terms of u because we can only integrate when we have something in one variable. And that's almost what we have because we have an x dx down here but we have this pesky 2 out front. So in order to change it so that we just have x dx, all we're going to do is multiply both sides by 1 half. So now we're going to get 1 half du is equal to x dx. And once we have this matching what's left over in our integral, we're good to go. We can finish rewriting and just simply integrate. So now we're going to have the sine of u times 1 half du. And since 1 half is just a constant, we can pull it out front. So we're going to have 1 half times the integral of sine of u du. And you know how to integrate the sine of u. So now all we're going to do is we're going to have 1 half times the antiderivative of sine, which is going to be negative cosine of u. And then since this is an indefinite integral, we want to add that constant of integration on there in the end. So put on your plus c. So we're going to have negative 1 half the cosine. And now the thing about u substitution problems is that you have to end your answer with whatever variable you started with. So we started with x's up here, so we want to have our final answer having x's. So I don't want to continue to write the cosine of u. I want to put back in whatever u is equal to. So now I can just put in, whoops, not 2, just put in x squared plus 1 plus c. So this is going to be our final answer here. And if you're ever not sure if you did it right, you can always, of course, take the derivative of whatever your answer was and make sure it matches up with whatever was originally inside of your integral, which if we use the chain rule on this, we would get back what we originally had. So that's great. So let's try another one. So let's try something like x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 1. So with the um, functions like these, if you ever notice that you have a higher power somewhere and then one lower than it somewhere else, that means that you probably want to pick your u to be whatever has the higher power in it. Because when you take the derivative, it'll drop your power down one and it'll match up with whatever is left over. So we're going to let our u be x cubed plus 1. Now a lot of people would say, okay, let's let the u be the square root of x cubed plus 1. But we don't want to choose that because when you take the derivative of the square root of x cubed plus 1, you're going to get 1 over the square root of x cubed plus 1 as part of your derivative, which isn't anywhere else inside of your integral, so then you'd have too much extra stuff going on. But if we let it just be x cubed plus 1 and we take our derivative, derivative is going to be 3x squared dx. So we already have this inside as u. So now all we need to do is replace the x squared dx, which we can do by simply multiplying both sides by 1 third to cancel with that 3, because then we get x squared dx, which means that we can now rewrite our integral to be the square root of u du times the 1 third du, rather, which we can then pull out the 1 third and rewrite the square root to be u to the 1 half du. So now that looks like something that's really e easy to integrate using our power rule for integration. So we're just going to have 1 third times u to the 1 half plus 1, or 3 halves, divided by the new power, so divided by 3 halves, plus c, which is just going to be 1 third, oops, not 3 over 3, 3 over 2, whoops. And when we divide by a fraction, it just really flips it up. So u to the 3 halves plus c, which now if we multiply these two things together, we're going to get 2 over 9 u to the 3 halves plus c. And now I can't leave that as my final answer because it has u's in it, and we started with x's, so we have to end with x's. So we're going to get 2 ninths times x cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. And that'll be our final answer. So there you go. So that's one more um, pattern recognition for you to do. So if you ever see um, something with a power and then something with a lower power something somewhere else in your integral, that's usually going to be your u and du situation popping out.
Okay, so what happens when we just have the square root of 2x plus 1? So you might be saying, why is this a u sub problem? Well, it's a u sub problem because we don't know how, we have to get rid of that composition of functions. So what we're going to do is actually just let our u be equal to 2x plus 1. And that's because when we um, take the antiderivative of a square root, we only want one thing under the square root. We don't know how to take the integral of the square root of 2x plus 1, but we do know how to take the square root of x or the square root of u. So we want to try and transform our integral into something like that. So again, we're going to take our du, which is just going to be 2 dx, which we only have one dx left up here in our integral, so now all we have to do is multiply both sides by a half, so we get that dx. So now all we want to do is go about rewriting our integral, so we're going to have the square root of u times one half dx, pull that one half out using that constant rule, and then rewrite this to be u to the one half du, which, whoops, that should be a u, not a dx. So then we're going to have one half times u to the three halves over three halves plus c, which is just going to be one half times two thirds u to the three halves, flipping that fraction up from the denominator, which if we cross cancel this, the twos are going to cancel, so we're going to get one third u to the three halves plus c. And now all we have to do is substitute back in for what our u was so that we can write our answer in terms of x's. So we're going to get one third times 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves power plus c. So there you go. So we have one more example problem for this video, and then I believe there are four more example problems in the next video. So if you're still not quite sure of how to go about this on your own, I would suggest watching that video and then maybe re-watching this one, but pausing it before I go through the solutions for each of the example problems to see if you can start picking them up on your own without just memorizing what the U's are. So now we have a problem. So this example problem looks a lot like the last one, except we have this extra x floating around out here. So that's a little bit of an issue, but what we're going to do first is we know that we don't know how to integrate the square root of 2x minus 1. So that 2x minus 1 is probably going to be our u, and we're going to see where that takes us. Because when in doubt, just pick a u, find your du, see if you can rewrite your integral to be something you know how to take the integral of, and if it doesn't work out, just go back to the beginning and try something else for your u. When you're first starting out with this, a lot of your problems are just going to be guess and check. So you're just going to guess at a U, work it through, and see how far you can get. If you get stuck somewhere, go back and try a different U, see if that works out better for you. And eventually, after you do enough problems, you're going to get the hang of it, and you're going to start seeing really easily what to pick for your U. So if we take our DU, we know from before that we're just going to get 2DX, and that we want to multiply both sides by a half, so that we can replace that, our dx, with the one-half du. So as of right now, we have an x still at front times the square root of u times one-half du, which means that the only issue inside of our integral is that x. But what would happen if we just solved this quantity right here for x? So if we solve for x, we're going to get u plus 1 is equal to 2x, and if we solve for x further, we're just going to get 1 half of u plus 1 is equal to x. So now I can rewrite the x that I have left over in my integral as a function of u. So now I'm just going to have 1 half times u plus 1 times u. We're going to just rewrite that power as a 1 half times 1 half du. If we multiply that 1 half and 1 half together, we're going to get a 1 fourth, which I can pull out front times the integral of u plus 1 times u to the 1 half du. Now you, you might be saying, okay, I still don't know how to integrate that. How am I supposed to do that? Well, now what we can do is we can just multiply that u to the 1 half power into the quantity and then use exponent rules to simplify. So if we distribute this u, u times u to the 1 half, we're just going to add the power of 1 that's on this u originally, plus the 1 half, 
and then we're going to do plus u to the one half because u times one is just u to the one u to the one half times one rather is just u to the one half du, which is just going to be equal to a quarter times the integral of u to the three halves. If we simplify the one plus one half plus u to the one half du. So now it's at a point where we know how to integrate it, which is exactly what we want. So if we use our power rule of integration, so first if we integrate that u to the 3 halves, u to the 3 halves plus 1 is going to give us a 5 halves power over 5 halves, plus we know that this is u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, since we've done that integral a few times today, plus c, which is just going to be equal to 1 quarter, and then we're going to flip those fractions and the denominators up, so we're going to get 2 fifths, u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. If we multiply that 1 fourth through, we can cancel this both the 2's in here, make them 1's, and this will become a 2. So we're going to get 1 over 10 u to the 5 halves plus 1 over 6, u to the 3 halves, plus c. And now all we have to do is substitute back in for our u, which if we look back at the beginning of the problem, was just 2x minus 1. So our final answer here is going to be 1 tenth times 2x minus 1 to the 5 halves power, plus 1 6, 2x minus 1, the 3 halves power plus c. Now if you're still a little confused on how I got the 1 tenth and the 1 sixth, if I had multiplied 1 fourth times 2 fifths, I would have gotten 2 over 20, which simplifies down to 1 over 10. And if I had done the 1 fourth, distributed the 1 fourth then to the 2 thirds, I would have gotten 2 over 12, which just simplifies down to 1 over 6. So whenever I do these problems, I try to simplify my coefficients before I actually distribute them through, just because it usually takes a line off of your problem solving, and it makes your numbers smaller much faster, so you don't have to deal with any large numbers later on. So that's it for this video. I hope this helped give you an introduction to what use substitution is. If you're still a little confused and a little lost on your homework, try watching the next video. But I hope this helped. Have a great rest of your day.